If you're going to be growing plants in containers, either outside or house plants inside, or if you're going to be starting some seedlings this winter in a greenhouse or on a sunny windowsill in your house, you need to have a growing media to put in these pots for the plants to grow in. One of the most basic media to grow in is what you growing your garden in outside, and that's just plain old garden soil. Garden soil will work quite well for container plants, especially outside. It has, if you have a good garden soil, it has everything that these plants will need, plus it has some weight to it, especially if you're in a windy area, that extra weight will keep the plant from toppling over in the wind, as can happen with some of the lighter soilless mixes. Garden soil is not really good for starting seedlings in as it comes from the garden because there are so many fungi and bacteria in it when you get into the warm moist conditions that you get into in a greenhouse or while you're trying to start the seedlings very often the seedlings will damp off and be a fungus rot right at the soil line which is very common with unsterilized garden soil you can use plain old garden soil for starting seedlings if you sterilize it first. What you need to do, only use this if you, if you have good garden soil, if it's a loam or a sandy loam. If you have a very tight clay soil, don't bother trying to sterilize it. To sterilize it, you need moist soil and you need to heat it to 160 degrees for 10 minutes or 180 degrees for 30 minutes as a maximum. You don't need to get it any hotter than 180 degrees you don't need to have it that hot for any longer than 30 minutes. What this does is it will kill off all of the harmful organisms, weed seeds, nematodes, fungi, and leave you with a mostly sterile media that can work very well as a planting media for starting seedlings. If you have a, a clay soil, a high clay soil, and you do sterilize it with heat, then you're liable to end up with brick if you're not too careful. So as I say, only do this with good garden soil. Also, do it outside. Gar the smell of cooking garden soil is very unique. It brings back fond memories for me because my father used to sterilize soil for his greenhouse. But it, it's hard to describe, but in effect, it's very close to dirty socks. It's not something you want in the kitchen. It is very, very strong odor. So if you do use garden soil, cook it outside, and make sure that you get it to the right temperature to avoid problems. Another part of, guard, of a, a potting mixture that you can use is just compost from your compost pile. It has good, high organic matter and it has some nutrients in it, but it shares the problem with garden soil in that it isn't really a sterile media. There are a lot of fungal organisms in it, and for seedling, starting seedlings, you can run into problems with damping off using compost. It works just fine in a soil mix for container plants, large plants that you don't have to worry about damping off. But for starting seedlings, it's probably not your best. So, if you're not using just regular soil, you're using one of the soil mixes or artificial soils, which are used. You can buy these ready-made. They're made of several individual components, and I'm going to talk about these a little bit now. There's usually an organic component, which is usually peat mix. Peat comes from northern bogs. It is, it is ground up and dried. It is mostly sterile because it is very acid and not very much can grow in it. When you use it in a soil mix, you need to add some limestone to it, ground lime, in order to counteract the acidity. You need about one ounce of ground limestone for every gallon of peat moss in the mixture. Otherwise, the soil mix will be too acid. Mixed with the peat, you usually have one of several inorganic materials, either sand, vermiculite, or perlite. Peat moss by itself has excellent water holding capacity, but it does not drain very well. If you just try to grow something in plain peat, 
it will tend to be too waterlogged and the roots will start dying from lack of oxygen. So you need a coarser material to mix in to provide the air drainage and the water drainage. One of these is perlite. Perlite is tough volcanic rock. It is just natural rock which has been heat treated and it acts very much like puffed wheat or puffed rice. Under this very quick heat, the water inside puffs open and it expands tremendously. And that's where you get the very light perlite granules. Vermiculite is produced in much the same way. It is heat treated to cause it to puff. It's made out of a mica-like material, which has several flat layers. And if you look at vermiculite carefully, you can see these layers. And in response to that heat, these layers expand so that you get a very light, coarse material. Of course, you have sand, which can be used. It provides the same function in providing a coarseness to the material so that water and air can drain through. Sand has the advantage that it does have some weight and can provide stability in a windy situation. Sand has the disadvantage that it is heavy, and if you are carrying several flats of it, it can be too much to carry. The vermiculite and perlite mixtures are much lighter, much easier to handle. But sand, vermiculite, and perlite can be used interchangeably in any of these soil mixes. The peat or, or organic part of the soil mix is usually only about a third to one half of the total mixture, with the balance being made up of some combination of these other coarser materials. Here in front, we have a, a peat vermiculite mixture, approximately half and half. If you look there, you can see the, the two different components. In the back, we have a peat vermiculite and perlite mixture. And if you look carefully, you can also see the perlite in there. Now, be careful, especially with the perlite, if you're working with it. It is very dusty. Wet it down first before you try and work with it. And it's important to wear one of these paper dust masks when you're working with it because the dust can be very irritating to your lungs and to your nostrils. If you only want and need a small portion of soil, it's probably best to get a commercial preparation. They're widely available from a variety of outlets, pre-mixed. You don't have to worry about buying the components and getting the proportions right. One last point about these inorganic soil mixes is that the peat, the vermiculite, the perlite, and the sand do not have any nutrients in them. So you are providing a medium, a place for the roots to grow, but it's very important that you also provide fertilizer because there is none in these components. Any fertilizer has to be supplied by you, either mixed in with the soil or added as a diluted soluble fertilizer afterwards. So to sum up, if you are growing container plants, large container plants, you can use garden soil very successfully, either straight or mixed with sand or compost or peat moss. It's easier and much more sterile if you're using seedlings to use one of these artificial mixes. These artificial mixes can also be used for container and house plants just as successful. One thing, if you're growing seedlings, make certain your soil is sterile, either sterilized soil or peat light or peat vermiculite mix.